Today we're going to build a clone of the Yaesu FH2 remote control. Come along with me for the ride. See how you can do this a lot cheaper. Stick around. All right, obviously we've got to start off with the box. I've already taken the bottom off of the box. And you want to lay out a grid pattern. Get it in the light right here so maybe you can see the lines here. I'm going to be putting six switches in this box, one at each of the line intersections. And these are the switches that I'm going to be using. Different colors. And I'm going to drill the holes in these box with a hole saw made for plastic. This is 5 8 inch and uh, as always I'll link to everything in the description below. So let me get some holes drilled in this box and I will be right back. Got all the holes drilled. That little hole saw makes nice work of these. Let's go ahead and put these buttons in here. The place we want them. We'll do our, yeah I know they're not quite symmetrical but it'll be okay. I'm an amateur. So let's put our push to talk down here. We will have five, a button five and four and three, two and one. So that's what it'll look like when it's done, hopefully. And what we'll do is we'll come on the bottom here and we'll go ahead and put the washers and the nuts on the bottom of all these switches. So it'll hold them in place. I'll do that and be right back. You got all the switches in there and they are all mounted. I have found that if you orientate, 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 orientate <laughs> your switches the same way, it makes it easier to snake the wire through here and to solder on your resistors and everything you need. But next we need to drill some holes for some 3.5 millimeter plugs. I need two of them. One of them is going to hook up to the remote, remote port on the radio to run these five buttons. And the other one's going to be a dedicated push to talk switch, which just uh, grounds the radio on the push to talk port. So let's get some holes drilled here for two 3.5 millimeter plugs. All right, got the two uh, 3.5 millimeter connections drilled in here. You can see the bulkhead connectors right there. And I took my, and now smeared it, awesome. <laughs> I took my uh, paint marker and put a T on this one. This is gonna be my push to talk or my transmit one. This one is just gonna be wired directly to the red button here to basically uh, ground the, uh, the tip in the sleeve. So my radio will get the push to talk signal and uh, push to talk. That one's going to be really simple to wire up the switches. We're going to need to put resistors in line here so the radio will see the correct resistive value and trigger the correct voice memory. And uh, those values are right here. I'm going to go ahead and put them up on the screen. And there's different resistor values for each voice or CW memory slot. And I found the last one of these I built, I did not need to use the capacitor. Matter of fact, when I used the capacitor, it didn't work at all. So I did not use the capacitor in my version. And uh, yeah, that's that. So let's get to soldering our resistors onto the switches first. And then I'll bring you right back and show you what that looks like. Switch number one, which is going to be that top left one, which is going to be this one right here, is an 866 ohm resistor, which you'll solder onto one of these legs on the switch. It doesn't matter which one. I'm going to solder it onto right there. Then we'll bend it up a little bit. Check the heat on my gun, make sure we're not, on my iron anyway, make sure we're not too hot. It's 
looking good. All right, so once you have it soldered in there, what we'll do is we'll take uh, the end of the resistor and we'll kind of put it upwards a little bit so you can see that this other tail end will just snip off. So let me go ahead and, and do the rest of these and uh, be right back. We've got all of our resistors soldered on here. I don't know how well you can see that, but they're just soldered on one side of the switch. And again, the resistor values are up there in the corner for you. Now we have to take the resistors themselves are going to be wired to the negative side of your your uh, your 3.5 millimeter connector or the sleeve. So we're going to wire all of the resistors together and basically form a, a ring loop and we're going to put it on the sleeve side of this connector. This is where they say in the chart that you see right there you need that 220 narrow farad capacitor. Um, the last box I built I put the capacitor in there it did not work at all and I do have the right you know value of capacitor got them from DigiKey but we're gonna try it without the capacitor and see what happens so let me get all the resistors wired up and then over to the 3.5 millimeter connector and I'll be back once I run that wire I'm gonna be using uh, let's see oh let me grab my wire here I'm gonna be using 18 gauge wire just to uh, get these connectors in here so let me get all these wired up soldered up and I'll be right back got the negative side all wired up started on this switch and basically just jumped from resistor to resistor to resistor and then to the negative or the the shield rather of this 3.5 millimeter connector I don't know if you can see down in there very well but there it is right there now we connect the other side of the switches all together to the tip of this 3.5 millimeter. So let me run a wire through all the other side of the switches to the tip of this 3.5 millimeter and I'll be right back when that's done. Got that side wired up to the tip of the 3.5 millimeter jack here. Just jump it around one underneath and around and then to the tip of the 3.5 millimeter. Um, it should be good enough to test the the memory buttons anyway. We don't have to push to talk wired yet. We're gonna do that in just a minute. So let's test the memory side of this. I have, if I can find it, here it is. This cable right here is going to the remote port of my Yezu. So we're gonna plug this into here and flip the box over and let's see if just the memories work let me turn my break in off so we're not transmitting let's see whiskey delta four that one works whiskey delta that one works right that one works whiskey delta that one works whiskey. they all work whiskey delta four whiskey 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 right whiskey delta whiskey whiskey all right so our buttons work and like you saw, I did not use the capacitor for this. So right now we have our voice triggers working. And uh, since they are triggering, they will work on CW as well. And that's without the capacitor. So I did not use the capacitor at all. So let's wire up the red PTT. This is simple enough. The red PTT here, all this does is go to this jack and we're basically going to take the tip and the sleeve and ground them together when you push this button. Simple, easy peasy wiring. So all the PTT button does is take the negative and positive tip and sleeve and just ground them together to send the signal to your radio. Pin this out to figure out what your radio needs, whether where it's grounding. You might need the sleeve and the tip. You might need one of the rings and the tip um, depending on what your radio needs and how you and how you are connecting it, um, if you're using the push to talk 
you know, quarter inch adapter that's on a Heil, you're actually going to want the tip and one of the rings for this. You're not going to use the sleeve connector, the sleeve connector, the, the, the sleeve connection point on this. And that's exactly what I'm using. I'm using a, uh, a Heil adapter on the front of my radio that plugs into the mic port. And I'm using that quarter inch plug to uh, drive this PTT. So I'm going to, I'm going to use the tip and one of the rings. I'm not going to use the actual sleeve, but pin this out for yourself. All you're doing is basically grounding positive, negative, making, making continuity to tell your radio to, uh, to activate the push to talk. So let me get this wired up. All right. Got the push to talk wired. Like I said, it's just making a ground connection up here to this 3.5 millimeter jack. And uh, let's test this out here. This is a 3.5 millimeter to a quarter inch adapter, which I have plugged into my Heil um, PTT, where, where your foot switch would normally plug in here. So let's see. It does keep my radio. That is good. And let's plug in the other cable, which is going into the remote port of my radio, make sure my buttons still work. Whiskey. They do. Whiskey. Whiskey. Well, there you have it. Let's go ahead and throw the bottom on this. A little snap bottom. And uh, there you have it. You're done. A little easy project if you uh, want to build your own FH2 clone from Yezu. It doesn't have the fancy up and down for the frequency or the memory button or anything like that, but honestly, I never use those buttons anyway, so this right here is good enough for me. Well, there you have it. The Yezu FH2 remote clone that we have just built. A little bit cheaper on the wallet than the actual Yezu FH2 remote for sure. And you can order some of this stuff in bulk. You can build probably four or five of these things. If you have, say, an 891 in the field that you want to use, your home radio, maybe you just want to build one for a buddy. That's pretty cool too. Hopefully I saved you a little bit of money because for me, the actual FH2 is kind of overpriced at almost a hundred bucks for that thing it's kind of ridiculous if you ask me appreciate you following along as always give me a thumbs up give me a like subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can get notified the next time i put out a video and as always guys 73 see you